People are saying that right now DC Comics is kicking Marvel's ass in the television world. And that may be true, but it's only because DC simply produces more shows. It has nothing to do with quality difference. Marvel's Agent Carter is a TV series set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is specifically spun off from the Captain America films, as well as the Agent Carter one-shot short film, and it stars Haley Atwell as the main character. Taking place after the events of Captain America the First Avenger, Marvel's Agent Carter has Peggy Carter working for the SSR once again. Now, for those of you who haven't seen Captain America the Winter Soldier, the SSR is the precursor to S.H.I.E.L.D. It's like there was the SSR, and then it turned into S.H.I.E.L.D. She's working for them. However, since the war is over, all the men have come back, and they've taken their original jobs again. So all the men are field agents, and Peggy, who's equally capable of being a field agent, has been reduced to a glorified secretary. Now, Peggy isn't very happy about this, but she just kind of goes with it. She's like, whatever. She has a job. She's not quite sure what's next in her life due to the fact, for one thing, that she's grieving over Captain America still. As you remember from Captain America, the first Avenger, right before Captain America got on the plane, he and Peggy shared a final kiss before he got on the plane and presumably killed him when he crashed the plane. Of course, as revealed in the end of the first movie, we know that Captain America is actually still alive, frozen in ice. But at this point in time, they don't know that. They just assume that Cap is dead. And Peggy's still grieving over this. She doesn't know where her life is going until Howard Stark, yes, Tony Stark's dad, Howard Stark, re-enters her life and tells her that he's essentially been framed for a crime selling weapons to enemies of the United States in a selling to the top bidder kind of thing. Someone has hijacked some of his stuff, some of his weapons. And we're we're not talking like Tommy guns or tanks here. We're talking about like really scary, powerful science fiction weapons that only someone in the 1940s could truly imagine. I mean, this is this is the company that would later build an Iron Man suit. Who knows what they could have built in the 1940s. Howard tells her of this and enlists Peggy's help to be a double agent, going on rogue missions to investigate on her own how he was framed, who's framing him, and why, in hopes that Howard's name could be cleared. And she has to do this behind all her co-workers' backs, because she's not allowed in the field. She's supposed to stay in the office and file paperwork. So while she goes on her rogue missions, she is tagged along by Mr. Edwin Jarvis. Yes, Jarvis. The original Jarvis. Not Tony Stark's Jarvis, which is a computer program, but the original Jarvis, who is a an actual butler. And this butler works for Howard Stark, and he's been enlisted by Howard Stark to assist Peggy Carter in the investigation. By the way, James Darcy, the guy who plays Jarvis, doesn't he look like he could be Benedict Cumberbatch's brother? Even though sexism is a big theme in this show, not all the men are out <laughs> Jarvis, for, on one hand, respects Peggy Carter because he knows she is a capable person in fighting and investigating. She's very much willing to get in on the action and get straight to the point where he's a little hesitant. He's a little bit nervous, probably a little bit traumatized for having to deal with Howard's miscellaneous activities. The agents that work with Peggy Carter include Jack Thompson, played by Chad Michael Murray, He's a war veteran. He's like a serious hotshot. You know, he's very much willing to do the job, but he's kind of a hotshot at it while he does it. He just wants to be really good at his job. Then you have Agent Daniel Souza, played by Enver Jokaj. And he's like the nice agent to Peggy. He's nice to her. You almost wonder if he might have feelings for her. But he almost can kind of relate to Peggy since he experiences prejudices due to the fact he has a crippled leg. He has to walk on a crutch. So he's disabled, which has put him into a more humble position. Therefore, he doesn't act like a chauvinist in front of 
Peggy, like he doesn't chest pump or anything like that. Then we have Roger Dooley, who's the boss, their boss, at the SSR, played by Shea Willingham. And he is a blowhard, you know, he's got a sense of humor. He, he's like the stereotypical chief of police, you know. You know, I want to get this done, and I'm talking in a slight, slight New Yorker accent. All in all, the main theme of this series is that Carter has to prove to her co-workers that she can be a very capable field agent. She's a symbol for women post-World War II. The idea that women took a lot of the men's jobs while the men were fighting the war, and when the men came back, they said, all right, thanks, but we'll have our jobs back because we can do them better. And the women are left saying, hey, hey, wait a second. I like my job now. Like, I like being employed. Why do I have to be put down to a secretarial position where, you know, I'm lesser? Which some say is the how the feminist movement truly got started. And Agent Carter is the literal symbol of that. But it doesn't get too preachy. Again, not all the men are in the show are assholes. Even the one that, even the two that like doubt her. They're not, you know, horrible people. They have a third dimension. And when you watch this show, you will see that. You'll see that on all the characters. The main thing I really like about this show is that unlike the, the first half of the season one of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter is about something right off the bat. It thrusts you into the actual premise of the show. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had to wait a while. It essentially had to wait until Captain America the Winter Soldier came out, and then it became about something specific. This one's about something right off the bat. And it kind of helps that this season, this inaugural season, is only eight episodes long. I don't know if they're going to renew it for a season two or not. ABC is yet to announce as I'm recording this video. But what I can say is that if you are a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you will love this show. As long as you can get over the fact that there aren't that many super people in this show. There are not a whole lot of people with superpowers. But it takes place in that same world and you get more immersed in that world with this series. You get to see what it was like between Captain America 1 and Iron Man. You get to see what that was like, because there, there's, there's like a 70-year gap there, so a lot happened. And I suppose if this series was renewed for another season and it was allowed to continue, it would eventually lead to the point where Peggy Carter, as referenced in Captain America the Winter Soldier, would be one of the co-founders of S.H.I.E.L.D. So... There is a lot of potential for this series, and you can see that watching this series. I hope they keep this going. If they don't, that's okay, since the season does end on a bit of a conclusive note. Even the bonus scene in the end doesn't really need a whole lot of explaining if you've been keeping up with the movies and the shows. Marvel's Agent Carter is a very well done TV show right off the bat. Very well done in action, very well done in writing, very well done in pacing, and very well done in the establishment of its world and its characters. When this show gets released on Netflix and or DVD, I strongly suggest you should check it out. See if you can find a site like ABC or Hulu that you can stream it. If you haven't been watching this show, you're kind of missing out. Just saying. This is an excellent show. And that concludes my review for Marvel's Agent Carter Season 1. I hope that I will be given the chance to do more reviews of this show. But, whether I do or not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.